I read you this letter, it's very honest, it's very truthful, it's very, very, um, I can't think of anything else to say. You'll sign it, just, just listen or watch or whatever. And this is what a narcissist does to you. This is what a narcissist makes you feel like. This was me last year. Um, do not think that narcissism is just looking in mirrors, fancying yourself, thinking you're great. Narcissism is more than that. Narcissistic people do things to you that make you not the person you are. And this letter is what a narcissist turned me into. So I shall start reading it now. So you have finally decided to do something you said you were going to do back in May, um, June. Wow, you've finally decided it's time to divorce. Something that has taken so long to do. From the time you separated to now, you have made my life hell. You have gambled with our futures for months, knowing any minute I could walk away. But you were prepared for that to happen, obviously. You made me feel the worst pain I have ever felt. You made me feel like I was nobody worth putting first. You told me your daughter hates me and was going to bitch slap me, that I should stay away from the pub she goes to. Told her it was me that made you make all the bad choices, watched me suffer and cry. You watched and listened to, my, to me break down, listened to me ask you, please, please move the divorce along as I was falling apart and it would break us. You made me feel worthless. You made me lose my sanity. You blamed me for hurting your family. You accused me continuously of wanting to punish them. You told me to duck in the cars and not hurt her feelings if she drove by, making me feel like shit. But it was a joke. You told me I could do, I could be the reason that you could end up living in a cardboard box if it got out about us because you're a celebrity, i.e. putting yourself above me, and then blaming it on drink. You told me I was a psycho and to go and live on a desert island because I was all fucked up. Excuse my French. You watched me lose a stone in weight, get depression, take anxiety tablets, antidepressant tablets, you got, I got an eating disorder. I got put on the counsellor. I had numerous breakdowns. You made me want to die. You let me down over the holiday. You broke my heart because you felt so broken. So you broke me just that little bit more. You cost me money, which I couldn't afford, as well as my sanity. You abandoned me for nearly four weeks because I upset you when I needed support over my cancer scare. But you chose to ignore all my needs because you couldn't do it. Because it would hurt you and it was hurting her. Your manipulation of my emails amazed me. You got angry at me because I blocked you. I blocked you because you ignored my emails while I needed support, as I'm scared I have cancer and you abandoned me. You make out a letter I write is more concerned, more concerned over money than my health, just because I actually wrote the letter about the money and mentioned my lump in that order. You even had the stupidity of telling me my strength of character may have contributed to Mike, that psycho that held me hostage. Um, and threatening the life of me and my family. You blamed me for that. Um, take responsibility for your choices, for your decisions. Admit when you were wrong. Own your stupidity. Do not try and squirm out of everything. So you're now sick and you keep telling me you're sick? I was sick. You never felt for me then. If you did, your decision to get on with the divorce would have been then, not now, because now you're depressed. It's different. You're going to do it for you because you've had enough. Nice. You ram it down my throat how sick you are. What about me? You have no empathy. You are selfish and you have made me look back on all your bad choices that almost drove me to madness. And you seriously think I want to spend my life with a man that lets me get that sick and listen to you tell me you can't hurt your family to the woman who's dying in front of your eyes? Sick. That's sick. I've thought back to our emails and conversations. You twist things to make out you did nothing wrong. You deflected everything back onto me. When you hurt me, you get angry for me getting upset at something you've done to hurt me. You accused me of intentionally putting guilt onto you. You chose not to say things but throw them back at me in future arguments when I had no clue. You called my help controlling. You would presume the worst of me all the time. You even used my letter telling you I didn't have cancer as a self-indulgent pity fest. You have ruined everything with your selfishness. Your ex was an ex in May and will be an ex in October and will be an ex in eight years. What have you gained? Fuck all, except an upset and hurt girlfriend who has, done nothing, who has nothing but pain in her head and heart brought on by you. And now you're sick? Well, you brought it all, all on yourself. It will be a very long time until I forgive you for what you have done to me, my so-called best friend. 
You promised me the world and gave me months of grief to only end up doing the very thing he was supposed to do in the first place, get divorced. But he's doing it for himself. If you were doing it for me and us, at the first signs of my breakdown, you would have decided then. You're ungrateful for the things I've done for us. I've saved us many times. You never did. If I couldn't cope, you just walked away. Again, it was up to me to save us. Every fucking time. Sorry. You never fought for me. If I was ever ill you went to the do and went to the doctors, you never asked me when we spoke how I was. You talked about yourself and your day until I reminded you. Even now you're going on about seeing a counsellor all the time, drumming it into me how sick you are. You're on antidepressants. You're under a counsellor. You have once, have you once asked me about my counselling? No. Um, yes, I went all soppy when you came round and hugged and kissed me because you were there. And as you know, all the pain goes when we hug, but that's not enough to build up a future. When I'm alone, I have time to think. All the negative comes flooding back. So that's maybe why I go downhill when we aren't together. The hugs keep the pain at bay, but it's still there underneath bubbling resentment waiting to come to the surface. You're feeling pity for yourself now. You're feeling, you're feeling how I felt all these months. Now that I'm strong, I'm calling the shots. I'm in control at last, whether we continue or not. I felt I had no control over my future. You had all the control. You had my future in your hands. Maybe now I've crawled out my black hole. I've got my strength back. And I look back at how you manipulated conversations to make everything my fault. You took away my self-worth. You made me feel suicidal. You killed my spirit. You took my smile. And you made me feel like I was a nasty, horrible psycho. You made me someone I'm not. You made me angry, mad, upset. And then once you made me that way, you called me an angry, mad psycho. You took away the person I was. I was once this nice, happy girl. You took that away, then accused me of being all the things you made me. I feel cheated now that you've brought the worst out in me. Through my sadness, you brought out all my anger and then you called me angry. I lost who I was because of you and now you see me as a nasty person, which you made me. You've taken away all the nicest you saw in me and replaced it with a broken person, an angry, mad person, who you think is me. You should never have made me that person I'm not. I should always have been happy foul to you. You've talked about me to other people, saying how psycho I am. But you made me that way. It's unfair I've been tarnished by this. The pain you put me through has tarnished me. I pride myself on my happy, friendly, likeable misdemeanour, but you turned me into a monster and then turned everyone, told everyone I'm a monster, but it was your fault. You've painted a vile picture of me to all around you and yourself. I fear I'll never be able to be seen as a person that I really am in your eyes or your friends. I'm a nice person, but you and the pain that you caused me brought out the worst in me. You lost Val. You lost the person you once knew. And you now have seen a sad, unhappy, depressed, mad side you can never unsee. And I've seen a side of you I never needed to see. If only this whole mess had been dealt with in the right way, we would never have ever been where we are now. You fucked everything up. I can't forgive you. You should have left you should have left your ex earlier, then you wouldn't have needed to see Broken Val. But no, you saw every horrid, painful, sad, angry, resentful, depressed, psycho side of me, which you never have you never should have fucking created. I feel you've tarnished my character by bringing out every negative emotion that could never you should never have been. I'm struggling with how I feel about you. I love the person I started dating, but do not love the person you are now. It's a fight in my heart. I love the man that made an effort for me at the beginning. I don't love the man that has made me who I am. I see you in a different light. You have tarnished both our good characters. I tried my best to look after you. I bought you things you needed. Yes, I may have changed you, but that's what because girlfriends do that. I wrote you poems. I tried to make you feel special. I tried to make you I tried to help you when you were struggling for money by trying to help you move into smaller places. Well, that was wrong. I offered you my home for free. I paid for the flights and the holiday. I even offered you a free holiday so you could still come. I tried my best. But I do not care anymore. I don't want a man that constantly puts his feelings before mine. He can't divorce his wife because he's feeling bad. So he puts his feelings before mine even though I'm having a breakdown. He's feeling bad. So he dumps his girlfriend with a holiday to pay for to go alone even though she needs him. So breaking her heart. He's feeling bad so he ignores his girlfriend's emails having found a lump in her breast. He's feeling bad, so he doesn't email his worried girlfriend for four weeks because he's upset because she's got upset with him for not caring about her. He's feeling bad, so he replies to her letter that she's struggled to write to tell him she doesn't have cancer with a long letter about his own pain. Well, she's had five weeks of it wondering if she's going to die. 
He's finally feeling so bad he's actually finally going to divorce his wife. Why? Because he's had enough. Nothing to do with watching his girlfriend turn suicidal over six months. No, it's because he's feeling bad. Reading back this letter has made me realise I let you into my bubble because you were my best friend. I feel like you were a wolf in sheep's clothing. You promised to treat me like a princess and protect me. Well, you protected the wrong person. Your ex got all the protection. I didn't. So you protected your past and now your future is also your past. Go back to her. Go back to your miserable life with her. You put money on the wrong life. You gambled your future and lost it. I always said you're gambling your future and now you've lost it. For what? Your ex, well done. You've won your past. I hope you and your, your past will be happy together. Was it worth it? Oh, and don't tell me, don't, don't email me ever again. It's over. I will only forward your mail back to you, then delete it. So don't bother writing a long letter, trying to manipulate stuff again. It won't work. It will be a waste of your time. Thanks for scarring me even more. Now, I'm my, now my next boyfriend's got his work cut out for him. If I'm not too traumatised from this experience to ever have another relationship for the rest of my life. <sighs> wow. Sorry, I got a bit stressed that one that's basically what i wrote to him that just says everything doesn't it really that just comes from a very honest part of me and i'm sharing that with you because i want people out there that think that narcissism is just oh they fancy each other they think they're handsome they're great N narcissists come in all forms shapes and sizes some are really stumpy some <laughs> had to get that one in some just they don't have that side of them they don't have the overt side they're all covert because they're little dweebs and they've got nothing else so they just ruined someone and he nearly ruined me as that letter says um i don't know what else to say now but that's what they do to you that i'm on the other side now so i shall i shall go um yeah um thanks again for watching <laughs> sorry if i got a little bit whatever shouty <laughs> i don't know what else i could call that reading of that message but anyway listen i'm gonna go before i waffle on too much all right you take care speak soon bye